Hi, this is Dr. Madhu, Consultant Senior Surgical Oncologist and Robotic Surgeon from Kim's Hospital. Today we are going to discuss about uterine cancers which have become uh, rampant and I can see the uh, significant increase in incidence of uterine cancer in women. It's very important to have knowledge about the uterine cancer. Today we are going to discuss about uterine cancer and its relative uh, in re relevant information. So I already told that uterine cancer incidence has gone up because of the lifestyle. Lifestyle ch has changed significantly in the recent decades. More women have become sedentary. The incidence of obesity has gone up. The incidence of diabetes has gone up because of stress. And the incidence of hypothyroidism also has gone up. So if you carefully listen to me, I already told the three risk factors for uterine cancer. The first one I mentioned is obesity. The second one, diabetes. The third one, hypothyroidism. These three factors are responsible for the development of uterine cancer. Most of the women who develop uterine cancer are aged, aged around 50 years. So the, these women are postmenopausal. Any woman after menopause, if she has the symptoms of bleeding per vagina, we should suspect uterine cancer. Uterine cancer also called as endometrial cancer. So uterine cancer is also called as endometrial cancer. So the, sim, the three risk, sim, important risk factors which I mentioned should be underlined and should be kept in mind any woman who has completed menopause presenting with spotting around the age of 50 should be suspected for endometrial cancer or uterine cancer some other risk factors that are been that have been described are uh, related to habits like smoking and alcoholism but most of the women will not be having these habits. Uh, as I already mentioned about the three things, the, those three important risk factors are considered as a major risk factors for uterine cancer. These habits may not be having a significant uh, involvement. And one more thing uh, one has to keep it in mind is uterine cancer sometimes are related to familial incidents also. So we have seen certain patients having familial incidence of uterine cancer. Probably uh, her mother might have been affected with breast cancer. Her mother might have been affected with gastric cancer. And certain syndromes have been described. So it may be interlinked and familial incidence of uterine cancer also has been described. So all these are considered as the important risk factors of uterine cancer and the most uh, incidence, uh, why the incidence of uterine cancer has gone up in the recent past is mainly, mainly, mainly due to the lifestyle, lifestyle modification. And surprisingly, the incidence of cervical cancer has gone down. The incidence of cervical cancer has gone down, mainly due to the improved hygiene and increased awareness among the women. Uh, the cervical and incident, cancer incidence has gone down, but the, on the contrary, the uterine cancer incidence has gone up. Uterine cancer patients, generally, the, I already told that any postmenopausal woman who presents with spotting, that is bleeding per vagina, we should suspect uterine cancer. See, most of the patients with uterine cancer have this major symptom. This is the single most symptom that will take us to the diagnosis. So, when this, when a patient presents with this kind of uh, spotting, uh, the clinician, as soon as he suspects, starts evaluating the patient to lead to the diagnosis. And uh, in this process, we should uh, evaluate in a systematic way such that we should not miss any diagnosis.
So, as soon as the patient presents with bleeding per vagina, our tendency is to do one basic ultrasound abdomen and pelvis. When we do ultrasound abdomen and pelvis, it is a guide for us which will show the uh, internal organ architecture. So, in the ultrasound, we have to concentrate on the thickness, thickness of endometrium in the uterus. Suppose if the thickness is more than 10 millimeters, we should suspect breast cancer, uh, uterine cancer. We should suspect uterine cancer. And when you suspect uterine cancer, the next step is to do a diagnostic investigation. So what is the diagnostic investigation for this uterine cancer is nothing but biopsy. So how do you do biopsy? Two ways to do. One is a blind procedure called dilatation and curatage. The other one is undervision. Undervision will be taking biopsy that is called hysteroscopic biopsy. So one is dilatation and curatage and the other one is hysteroscopic biopsy. So after doing ultrasound, we are doing a diagnostic investigation which is very clear these two methods one is the blind and the other, the other one is under the vision that is hysteroscopic biopsy this biopsy is going to yield you one particular diagnosis uh, regarding the uterine cancer so once we get the diagnosis of uterine cancer next step is how to treat the patient i have to treat the patient uh, that's what the patient has come to me i have to treat when I got the diagnosis, I need to know the staging. Staging. How I know the staging? I need to evaluate the patient. I need to evaluate the patient by doing uh, investigations like MRI pelvis. MRI pelvis and uh, or PET scan. So when to do a PET scan, when to do MRI is again a very important concept that needs to be followed by the clinician. Suppose in the biopsy, if I get the grade as grade 1 and or grade 2, MRI pelvis is enough. That's what the protocol we are following. Suppose if it is grade 3, grade 3 endometrial cancer or grade 3 uterine cancer or any other specific high grade histologies, poor prognostic histologies, we generally advise a PET CT, whole body PET CT. Otherwise, so for a poor histology, better advise PET CT and for a favorable histology, you advise MRI. Based on these uh, investigations, we get the information to operate on the patient or not or to send the patient for the conservative management. So once we stage the patient, there are certain treatment options which need to be implemented according to the biopsy report and according to the MRI imaging or PET scan. So let the patient is having grade 1 or grade 2 disease. The disease is confined to the uterus. There is no other swelling or any lump in the abdomen. If this is the scenario, the patient is the candidate for surgery. So surgery needs to be done. That means early uterine cancer or early endometrial cancer is treated by surgery. Suppose if it is a locally advanced uterine cancer, we give generally uh, chemotherapy. For a metastatic uterine cancer, again we give chemotherapy. The role of radiation comes after the surgery. When it is needed, we plan radiation. There are certain indications for radiation. Now, regarding the surgical part, as I earlier told, for early endometrial cancer, we do surgery. This surgery is done in three approaches. One is open method, the other one is laparoscopy, and the third one is robotics. In the traditional open method is a standard which we operate through a lower abdominal incision and do the procedure that is called TAH, BSO and bilateral pelvic lymph nodal dissection. But in the case of open surgery, the recovery, the ability for the patient to resume to their work will be a little bit slow. They may take some time. 
so the people are switching over to minimal invasive surgery so already mentioned two options for the minimal invasive surgery one is the laparoscopy and the other one is the robotics in the case of laparoscopy we do laparoscopic procedure that is called tlh bs4 plus bpl this laparoscopic approach is enhancing the recovery and speeding up their ability to resume to their work within a week but with open surgery it may take 3 to 4 weeks with the laparoscopy which in less than a week they can resume their work normally then what is the role of robotics in the case of uterine cancer there is a specific point when we have to do robotics in uterine cancer in the case of uterine cancer patient who has a pelvic lymph nodal presence in the imaging like mri or pet ct we have to address the higher group of lymph nodes that is called para aortic nodal assessment para aortic nodal assessment in this scenario the role of robotics has advantage over the laparoscopy or open surgery so this is a specific area where robotics has got its cutting edge advantage over the other modalities and based on the biopsy report whether the patient needs radiation or not should be discussed with the pathologist and radiation oncologist suppose the disease has gone beyond the uterus patient can be subjected to radiation suppose the patient is having metastasis in the liver momentum is got involved rest of the abdomen there are small small nodules in this scenario there is no other treatment except chemotherapy so these are all the treatment options to treat Uh, uterine cancer and the good thing god has done is most of the uterine cancer patients present with early disease and most of the times they will be cured with surgery not needing any other adjuvant treatment or that's a very good thing god has done to the uterine cancer patients it's a good news for the uterine cancer patients so how to prevent this uterine cancer to develop see prevention of uterine cancer is nothing but prevention of risk factors prevention of risk factors is regular workouts and exercise walks and having a, a limited diet to prevent obesity and diabetes any hypothyroid patient should be treated with uh, thyroid medication as early as possible without any delay so these prevent risk factors itself will prevent the disease to develop any patient who got who got significant family history can undergo a prophylactic surgery in the case of uterine cancer also and one more important thing which i forgot is a breast cancer patient who has been kept on hormonal therapy routinely patient will be premenopausal women will be placed on tamoxifen 20 mg so this patients will be using that medicine for a long time up to 10 years so during this process there is a chance that the patient may develop uterine cancer so when a patient is on tamoxifen it is the responsibility it is the duty of the clinician to monitor the patient regularly with the scans and to prevent this disease to develop and if he has any slightest amount of suspicion best is to suggest the patient to go for laparoscopy these are all the various uh, uh, thoughts how to prevent uterine cancer development its uh, present scenario and the lifestyle modification the best way definitely you are protected from uterine cancer thank you